when SARS emerged, that was interesting because we didn't know what was happening at first, right? There were a lot of government cover-ups. When the government finally admitted to what was happening, really in response to a lot of international pressure and they let the WHO into China, they jumped into, you know, they, they, they jumped into operational mode immediately. They mobilized all of their resources and they did what only China can do. There was a lot of self-quarantining in Beijing. Um, they built a hospital in a matter of a week. Um, because it's China, they got a lot of people to dedicate themselves, a lot of, a lot of healthcare workers to dedicate themselves to responding to the epidemic. Schools were closed. Transportation was closed. All of a sudden people started riding their bikes again. And in about three or four weeks, I think the number of cases were dramatically reduced to almost nothing. And within a couple of months, SARS was over. And it was like, it was like a blip. Uh, the, there were impacts on other parts of the world, but not anything like what we're seeing today. So it was interesting when this started, we saw the government mobilize its resources a lot quicker. There was a lot more transparency. They sequenced the virus within a week, I think, and sent that sequencing out to the rest of the world. So there was sharing of information um, and there was, there was transparency. And they, they mobilized their resources, but I think for some reason, this epidemic seems to, and, and, you know, they don't, they don't know a lot about the virus, but this epidemic seems to just transmit, you know, in a much more wild fashion. Um, and I think, you know, I think we thought China would be prepared for what, you know, if, if SARS came back, if it reemerged, I think we thought China would be prepared. Uh, after SARS, they modified their healthcare system. Um, they put into place, you know, a really, really advanced surveillance system that goes, you know, all the way from the, the lowest municipal level in the, you know, the township level, all the way up to the central level in Beijing. And I think this, maybe this was something that no country could be prepared for. Um, but again, they mobilized everything and quarantined entire cities. Uh, you know, 50 million people were quarantined. So, you know, the response was, the response was similar. It was, it's been much more drastic this time. Much, 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 much more drastic. And again, they've gotten it under control. As far as we know, there are almost no new cases in most of China. Um, and, they're, and they're continuing to be very, very vigilant. So, I think there's a lot more vigilance because they, they know that they need to be more vigilant. They have no idea what's gonna happen now that they're letting people go back to, you know, wherever they were living, if there'll be another outbreak. SARS was an, it was an interesting turning point in global health. After SARS happened, the WHO went to China or during, you know, while it was happening, the WHO went to China and said, why didn't you report this to us? Um, you know, there's, there's, there's something called the international health regulations, which require countries to report outbreaks of infectious disease. And the Chinese government said, well, we didn't know what it was. There was no name for it. it it's something that had never been identified before. And it's not on the list of reportable diseases. The original international health regulations only required countries to report three diseases. This was a totally novel disease. And so that did cause the global health community to go back and say, in, you know, sort of think to themselves, oh, we need to update the international health regulations. So in 2005, really in reaction to SARS, they updated the international health regulations. Um, so that, you know, reportable diseases, include a much wider category of diseases. Um, and countries are required to report, but they're also required to develop surveillance systems and preventative systems and um, laboratory 
cap capability and human resource capability, right? So they can not only report, but be prepared to address an epidemic. Unfortunately, that's difficult. It requires an incredible amount of resources and most countries don't have those resources. So, you know, I would say even though China improved its surveillance system after SARS and probably, you know, in response to the new international health regulations, um, there's a lot about the, the expectations in the international health regulations that is not developed in China. Um, you know, probably all kinds of human resource capabilities uh, and, you know, aside from monitoring systems, um, you know, preparedness includes things like actually going through, you know, scenario exercises and things like that. And, and you know, it's, the, the, I, the IHR lay out a perfect system and I don't think that perfect system exists anywhere at this point.